Blizzard. I'm the STEM teacher here at Roper Mountain Science Center. We're sad that you're not here with us for this, um, but we're going to do our best to bring Roper Mountain to you um, during these times. So we're going we're gonna to be talking about gravity and friction here, and I've got these two things here that we're going to take a look at here in a second. All right. So um, yeah, we're going to look at the relationship between gravity, friction, and motion. And to do this, we're going to start off with just a little exploration, and we're going to change camera views. I've got two ramps here, and I've got two pieces of wood. Everything being the same, we've got the same kind of surface, same kind of wood, same kind of wood with these. We've changed the top color just to tell them apart. And when we put them down on the track, all things the same, we should get a very similar time for them to reach the bottom. And... If they're the same there, that'll allow us to be able to um, explore a little bit of what would happen if we changed gravity and friction relationships. If we can move to the other camera view, all right? For the front one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the gravitational relationship. So I'm gonna keep the, the friction surface the same, and you know friction is that force in the opposite direction of motion. And I'm gonna keep that the same, but I'm gonna change gravitational pull by changing the slope. So that's gonna have gravity affecting motion differently. And for the top one, we'll keep the gravi gravitational relationship the same, but we'll change the friction relationship by adding a sandpaper panel. We can move, yeah, move to this view, sandpaper panel, and put that here. And then what we're, we're gonna do, we'll put the pieces of wood back on here, and we'll see which one get af gets affected the most by the change we made, or which one gets affected the least, and maybe better way to think about it. So yeah, let's think about it that way. When they reach the bottom, the quickest is gonna have the least amount of change, okay? So here we go, lock in your brain, which one you think is gonna reach the bottom first? Is it the orange one or the purple one? All right, lock it in, three, two, one, and go, go. They're not going to go. We can change views real quick. They're not going to go because when we change both of these things for different reasons, because we changed different um, relationships here, but still the result was the net force is in favor of friction in the opposite direction. Therefore, it's not going to move down the track. So in order for us to move down the track, we can do an actual investigation with one of these at a time and see what we have to change to get the motion back. So right now we've changed two variables, so not quite an investigation. Later on we'll do one at a time and just change one thing with these, all right? So I'm gonna put these back to the side here, and we're going to look a little bit more at gravity and friction than how they relate to each other. We'll come back to this, all right? So we have this thing here called a gravity wheel. I'm gonna turn the light on on it, zoom out just a little bit. All right, so we have autofocus. All right, awesome. So this is a gravity well. What this does is this lets me um, do a little bit of exploration of how objects affect each other when it comes to gravity. Um, this kind of changes, lets them affect each other because we have this stretchy surface between them and the Earth. And you know gravity is that pull that we have towards the Earth, but it's more than that. It is that attraction between objects in space and right now, they're not really affecting each other. These are just some plastic spheres. And they're both the same mass. They don't have huge effect on each other. They kind of do their own thing. Well, coming back towards each other a little bit, but not a whole lot. But if I were to swap one of these out with a metal sphere, and this metal sphere has more mass than the plastic sphere, there should be a difference of attraction here. And we can see that plastic one gets attracted to the more massive metal one as we go. So uh, gravity is that attraction between objects in space and more mass means it has more gravitational attraction and less mass is less gravitational attraction. But we're not talking about space here. We want to talk about what's happening in motion on Earth. So I have an iron sphere and this is um, like a mini cannonball. And what's happening with this, this is about a kilogram. And I put it in the middle because no matter where I put it, it's going to wind up in the middle. 
So I'm going to leave it in the middle. This time if I put the metal sphere and plastic sphere on, they're no longer, there's no longer going to be an effect on each other, an attraction to each other. It's only going to be an attraction to the iron sphere. And I could even add some other objects on here. I've got some marbles. I've got a ping pong ball, even a play pit ball. It doesn't matter where I put them on here. They're going to be attracted to the more massive iron sphere. And that's why everything on Earth is wanting to find itself back on the ground because of the, it's the biggest mass in town to everything around Earth, and so it's being attracted to Earth. And we're going to change camera views here. So gravity is this massive force down. That's why when if I take this and I throw it up, it comes back down. It's, and it's coming back down and flying across the room. We'll just let it go. Uh, but it's coming back down because it's slowing down, stopping, and then speeding out back towards the Earth. And that's why things go up and down. And um, to get stuff to space, we have to overcome that force. Um, yeah, so that's gravity, and gravity affects things going down a hill in all kinds of different ways. And we'll talk about another one of those ways in a minute. But first, let's come back to friction. Friction is that powerful force in the opposite direction of motion. Different surfaces have different friction relationships to each other. But it can be, like I said, very powerful. We have this cool thing we can do with this. I've got right here, I've got um, this, let me change views here and zoom in just a little bit, or a lot of it. This is autofocus here. This is a salt shaker full of rice. Just normal everyday rice, normal everyday salt shaker. Um, this is a don't try this at home. I will tell you a version of this that you can try at home, but I wouldn't use glass just in case stuff falls. And you might make a mess. There's a little piece of rice all over because I have made a mess here. All right, so I've got a pencil. It's normal everyday pencil. And if I slide it in, it's going to slide right back out because we know that rice is kind of smooth and the um, pencil itself is kind of smooth and so there's going to be very little friction and you can slide the pencil in and out. But what's weird is it's not actually that simple because we can change camera views. We can see if all things are right in here, I can actually pick up the rice, the rice bottle here with the pencil because the friction between the rice and the pencil is so great right now that the friction um, pushing the pencil doesn't allow me to pull it out. So the friction against me pulling it out is greater than me pulling it out. So, and the reason is that on a microscopic level, rice isn't that smooth. The pencil itself is not that smooth. And if we get air out of the way, there's so much friction that we just, it's really hard to overcome. Matter of fact, it takes a lot of work to get the pencil back out of here. But you're probably thinking, ah, that's all right. That's just, but that's just salt shaker and a pencil. So that, that's probably not going to be that much force. So I'm with you. So that's why we had to do it Rope Mountain style. And I've got this large glass. Let me zoom out with this one, then we'll change cameras. All right. So. All right, we can change over now. So this is a 2,000 milliliter um, Erlenmeyer flask full of rice. Compare it to the salt shaker and it's just, there's no comparison. All right, so this is pretty massive. Matter of fact, it's, and then the glass itself is massive. And then when you add this volume of rice, it's even more massive. So if we can change back to this view over here. So if this, if everything's true and the friction force is really powerful, I should be able to get something in here that's relatively smooth to, from our perspective, not microscopically, but I should be able to get it in there and do the same thing I did with the salt shaker. And I've used meteor stick because it has to be long enough to get in there. You can see that I got it right in there. Matter of fact, this makes people who buy stuff here at Roper Mountain really nervous because this is a really expensive Erlenmeyer flask and I'm just kind of waving it around all right but it's gonna hold because that friction is a powerful force and the friction and gravity have a lot of effect on motion here on earth and so i'm going to show you a really cool way to step, step off camera and i'm going to be a little bit closer to you i have a broom here this is cool and it's one of my favorite ways to show this 
you see we have different color zones here. The red, green, yellow, and orange. And one of these areas is where the center of gravity is. Now the broom has a mass on this side, not on this side. So it's not, it's not as easy as going straight to the middle. So to find center of gravity is difficult. But I can use the relationship between gravity and friction to actually find the center of balance um, of this broom, the center of gravity. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my hands together. Just watch what I'm doing. Okay? And then as I bring my hands together, you're going to see that on one side of this, there's so much friction that one hand will be pushing the broom while it's sliding over the other hand. At no point will both of my hands be moving the same underneath the broom. The one will be pushing the broom and one will be have being the sliding surface for the broom. All right. So as I bring my hands together, just watch. You can see right now, this hand is just pushing the broom. This hand is where it's sliding. But when I get right about here, this hand pushes, and the other hand slides, and then it goes back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, until we've reached that center of gravity, and I can balance this right here. And it's really cool, and you can, this is a try this at home situation, um, and it will work. Every broom is going to be a little bit different, and you can actually try different things like a meter stick. Meter stick will be in the center, but if you put a mass of some sort on one side, it will change where it is. And if you change that, where that mass is, it will change it completely um, where you, the center is. But what's happening here is everything to do with gravity and friction, and it's really cool. So the mass is here. Mass and gravity together equal a force down. So mass times gravity. And we call that weight. When you, get your, you, you weigh yourself, that's, that's a force that you're weighing. It's mass times gravity. When we increase mass, because gravity around the Earth is relatively the same, then we're increasing weight because mass goes up, then that multiplication is going to go up. The answer to that multiplication problem, mass times gravity. So what's cool about weight is weight force down has a relationship with friction because if you have a force down with friction you've increased the friction sliding friction of something so when you're trying to move a table if somebody sits on the table it's going to be harder to move because they've increased force down and that's what's happening here on this side the mass is greater therefore friction is high enough that I cannot just slide it it's going to just be it's going to hold still with this hand and just push the broom but then when I get here the mass on this side is greater, so now I have the friction to push on that side. And then it just trades off back and forth until we get to the center of gravity. And there you have it. Pretty cool. This is a try it, try it at home situation. Now, let's move back to where we started. And I'm going to change the views again. Actually, let me adjust a little bit before we move cameras. All right, cool. We can do that now. All right, so what we're going to do is let's look back at this and talk about friction and gravity. And then I, prom I did promise you at the end, I'll tell you how to do the, the, um, the rice trick. All right, so I'm going to take the, this one off because we want to do a proper scientific investigation in which we only change one variable. Now this time we want to figure out how we can have motion in this new gravitational relationship. So because I'm not going to move this because I've already moved this, I'm going to have to change the other relationship and that is um, friction. So I need to have a different surface that will allow the net force to be in favor of gravity to get it down. And I have a surface here that's just a little bit slicker than the wood. And when I put the block here, we have now put net force in favor of gravity and we have motion down the ramp. All right. So that one's pretty easy. For, so for this one, let's change this one back. This one was higher because we kept the gravity the same as our original. Um, this time, we're going to have to change it so that we can overcome the friction force up and have gravity win. And since we're not going to change the surface again, we're going to change gravity and we're going to change the slope. By changing the slope, we're changing that gravitational relationship until we have motion down. And that's how we can use that relationship between gravity and friction to change motion. And if we can change to this view. All right, um, just real quick before I wrap up that, that is pretty much everything I've told you about, but I promised you'll be able to do this 
at home. So with the rice trick, make sure when you practice this, you're doing this somewhere where it's okay to make a mess and you're willing to clean it up. But you can use a plastic water bottle. Don't use glass like I was, because if it falls, it breaks. I mean, I practiced a lot and I had a lot of falls and a lot of messes. All right, so what you want to do is you want to have a plastic water bottle, dry it out as best you can, fill it, use a funnel, fill it with rice. You want it to be mostly to the top. It does have to be a bottle, not a cup, because you want it to have a curve on it, because that'll give just a little bit of force down to help the friction. And then what you do is you just take your pencil or whatever, it could be a chopstick or whatever you want it to be, and you just want to kind of push all the air out. You kind of have to push it in. It takes a little while. You want to preload it for everyone before you say, hey, watch this, everybody. Um, and this, I preloaded this one for you because I was easily able to get it in there and do that. And it's just that simple. And you're using friction to do this really cool trick. Anyway, so thank you for joining us. Um, be on the lookout. We've got more lessons coming to go through all the content here um, for the year, for eighth grade. So be on the lookout next quarter. is going to be some new lessons, waves. I'm working on those right now for you. So anyway, um, thanks for coming. We'll see you next time. Bye.